Hi, this video is gonna be different from my other videos. I'm going to talk about my experience with the COVID-19 vaccine. I was administered the Moderna vaccine and I wanted to share with you the decision-making process that I went through and the literature that I read through before going through with a vaccination. My employer was kind enough to consolidate this information to us. If we had any concerns, any questions, it was on that fact sheet and that calmed me down and convinced me that it's gonna be okay and so that information is what I'm gonna to present to you today in this video so that when it's your turn to get the vaccine you won't have as many questions as I did no just kidding so you would have a more informed decision going through this so my first concern is how did it get made so fast and is it safe there has been SARS outbreaks before it may not be COVID-19, that's the culprit, but it's in the same family of viruses, which is the coronavirus. And so they didn't start from scratch with the research and development. That literature has already been there. And so now they just worked on that literature and adding more to it is the literature from COVID-19. And so they had a great jump start when it came to research and development. The government itself has full support on the vaccine development especially because it is a pandemic everybody was affected globally so just because it was developed so fast doesn't mean they skipped steps on the development of the vaccine so they still went through all of the stages that vaccine development should go through and that is found on the fda website and i will put the link down below so you can see the timeline of how the vaccine is developed so that's important to know that they didn't skip any steps they didn't skip phases they did go through the right process to get the vaccine going it's just that it's fully funded there was already literature about it and it is an emergency so everybody worked really hard to get this thing going. I just wanna share with you what I found on the Moderna website where the CEO, Stefan Bansell, gave a statement. I want to thank the NIH, particularly the NIAID, which as we know, Dr. Fauci is the head of the NIAID Aid, NIAID, which is the, the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. That is the NIAID. ID for their scientific leadership, including th through years of foundational research on potential pandemic threats at the Vaccine Research Center. That led to the discovery of the best way to make spike protein antigens that are being used in our vaccine and others. I want to thank our partners at BARDA and Operation Warp Speed who have been instrumental to accelerating our progress to this point. What stands out to me in this statement is that it's not just one company working hard on this. It is supported by various organizations that support research and science and development. A lot of people are on top of this and making sure that it's going to be safe and effective for people to get it. They were constantly checked and guided by different organizations. I also wanted to expand more on the phase three of the trial, which included 30,000 people. This included 11,000 participants from the communities of color representing 37% of the study population, which is similar to the diversity of the U.S at large. This includes more than 6,000 participants who identify as Hispanic and more than 3,000 participants who identify as Black or African American. So that is really important. I think that it's really good that they made the clinical trials as diverse as it should be. Another concern that people have is what is the vaccine made of? So the vaccine is made of RNA. <laughs> well, if you want to go into the specifics, I will link it up below too. It's in the FDA fact sheet. It's very easy to access it. You can see what it's made of and it's basically made of fat and RNA material inside the vaccine. So what is RNA? RNA carries a genetic code. Okay, It codes for proteins. So for the this RNA vaccine, it has an RNA instruction of the spike protein of the coronavirus. 
and the spike protein is the thing that you see around it <laughs> I think there's gonna be a video about this I think I found it before I'm gonna put it back here again but it's yeah it's the spike protein on the surface of the coronavirus that the RNA codes for so once you're vaccinated with it the RNA goes into your body and then your cells will read the RNA and then they will start to make the spike protein it makes the protein it pushes the protein up into the cell surface and your body will then notice this foreign protein okay because that code is not yours so that protein that you made even if your cells are the one that made it that protein is still considered foreign and will elicit an immune response that's it in a nutshell so yes you're not being inoculated a live virus or a deactivated virus it's just you are actually making a part of the virus but that's the thing you are not making the virus either it's just a part I hope that clarifies some things one more thing about the vaccine is that now that you know that it's made out of RNA we just have to clarify again this is on the CDC website and I think a lot of people should be informed about this that these vaccines will not interact with our DNA in any way. So DNA is your genetic code and it's found in the nucleus of your cells. The mRNA that is found on the vaccine will enter your cell but will, will never enter your nucleus. So it's not gonna go in there and interact with your DNA. And after the instruction from the RNA is read, and made the cells will break it down and it'll just dissolve after the instructions were completed from the RNA oh yeah and it's also important to understand what an emergency use authorization means it doesn't mean that just because there's a pandemic and it's an emergency they just oh yeah go inoculate people it's fine no it is still based on the data that they have collected and it's still very scientifically done it's not just poof we're going to approve this and it's gonna it's good to go it's safe no a lot of checks still has to be done in order for the fda to give emergency authorization on the vaccine so now enough about the science stuff i'm going to share with you my experience with the vaccine Okay, so this is the morning of vaccination. This is 9 a.m. I'm eating a healthy, hefty breakfast. <laughs> I want to prepare my body well. And then 12.09 was my vaccination. And yeah, I'm weird. I stare at the needle. And this is me and my friend after the vaccination. <laughs> How so do you feel? Shield? Yeah, we have two. <laughs> 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 How do you feel? Oh, I feel great! <laughs> <laughs> I felt a pinch on my elbow, but that was it. Okay, That's bye! Great. Bye! 09, it's exactly five hours since my injection, and I just arrived home from work, and I feel okay. My arm's kind of sore, and that's pretty much it that I can report right now. Aside from I feel tired, but I did work today, so that's normal. We'll see. Bye. Hello, so we are in my kitchen, and I just want to check in. It's 7 p.m., and I'm feeling so sleepy. <laughs> it's so early to be sleepy, but I guess that's one of the side effects. Hello, so this is probably my last check-in for the night. It's currently 7.45 p.m. <laughs> I am so sleepy and I'm calling it a night. That's it. Um, I was thinking of doing something but then I realized that I don't want to tire myself out even further because right now I'm really feeling drowsy and we'll see if I can work tomorrow. <laughs> But I'm just like so so sleepy. I'm hoping that if I sleep early tonight this will go away and when I wake up tomorrow morning it'll be fine. So that's it. Hey, good night. Hello, good morning. So it's 709 and I didn't make it to work. <laughs> 
um, my husband and I, we were both just making sure that I was okay. Um, yesterday, I felt so sleepy so early. I usually don't go to bed till like 9.30. I don't fall asleep till around 10. And yesterday, it was only 7.45 and my eyes were closing <laughs> um, right after I ate dinner. So that was weird. I thought I was just being dramatic, but that was weird. Um, I still have um, soreness and pain on the injection site. And we're just going to observe how I do today. Um, I don't want to be sleepy at work or when I'm commuting to work since I live quite far and I take public transportation so I don't want to risk that I don't want to be sleeping soundly <laughs> in the train um, so that's that so hopefully I'd feel better throughout the day and yeah so it's did I say what time it was? It was 7.09 right now. And we'll see. Hopefully today is a better day and I won't feel as sleepy throughout the day. And that's it. See ya. Hello. So this is my 24-hour update. It's 12.09 right now. It's been 24 hours since my vaccination. And I'm feeling so much better now. I was really still quite quite out of it. And I just picked myself up and tried to do some house stuff. And yes, I'm still wearing my sleeping clothes. <laughs> and I might feel sleepy again when I'm not doing anything. But other than that, um, I'm also just feeling the soreness from the injection site. It's like a bruise, like somebody punched you there but that's it so that's the update that's the 24 hour update and i'm feeling good feeling better now also as of filming this vlog this is the 48 hour mark of my vaccine and it looks fine there's no bruising it's not painful anymore i think the most pain i got on the injection site was yesterday which was 24 hours after vaccination Okay, so to wrap up this video, I just wanted to say that if you are scheduled to get the vaccine, I don't know how you're going to react because everybody is different after all. So for me, I did need to take the next day off because I was not normal. <laughs> that night, I was very, very sleepy at 7 p.m. and that's very early for me to get sleepy. So that was not, that was not right. And so I am already mentally prepping myself for the next dose because if I reacted this way to the first dose, there is a big chance that I might have the same effect on the next one because I did read the fact sheet. Again, check that out on the FDA's website and they show the numbers of people presenting some of the symptoms after vaccination. I meant to say side effects, not symptoms. So that information will also give you a better idea of what to expect after vaccination. And yeah, so this is a good thing, guys. <laughs> That's all I can say. Like our lives have literally stopped since the pandemic started. And if we have at least this fighting chance of getting back to normal, why not? Like really, this is our chance if everything goes through smoothly with all of the people getting vaccinated right now we are off to a great start into 2021 so yeah have a great day have a great rest of your day and have a great new year ahead of us thank you for watching this video bye